Hey everyone, it's Hayes, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the clock face person in the London special and who they could be. Originally I was going to do one video on the London special with theories and in it try and work out what was going on as well as the identity of clock face and that would come up but I just think it would just be too huge of a segue to discuss in the same video. So today we're going to talk about the identity of clock face or the possible identity of clock face and then hopefully later this week, unless there's more spoilers, <laughs> we'll do another video on the rest of the special and what I think is going on. So, clock face, who are they? I don't know for sure. <laughs> However, we do know some things about them already. They have some sort of power that firstly allows them to time travel, I'd assume, but perhaps in a different way to how Bunnix does it. But they also have the ability to phase through solid objects as well as to turn semi-invisible and also disappear as well. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's fun. So for the time travel, they could be using a miraculous that's from a parallel universe, as we know from evolution and multiplication, that you can't have more than one miraculous with the same power unless you have the rooster miraculous in which case your power is opening up plot holes <laughs> so it can only be a time travel miraculous if clock face is from a different world entirely but how they got here i don't know but i guess it's possible they could have snuck through during all the reverse shenanigans however assuming clock face is from the current world we know there are other magical objects in the world such as the prodigious as we saw in the shanghai special and whatever the name of the watches they use in the new york special how they use them to transform and become heroes. How these work exactly, I didn't write it, so I don't know. And as far as I'm aware, I don't actually think it's been discussed within the New York special or just the show as a whole. I haven't seen any discourse about it online. But right now, I think one of those is the best bet as to how this works. And it also might answer the question about how Clockface can phase through floors and also turn invisible. Honestly, it's kind of Kwame-like, since the Kwamis can phase through walls as well, which is quite interesting. Or perhaps this person, instead of using a prodigious or like a magical watch, um, has been akumatized, but we'll get to that more later. So put a pin in that, we'll get back to it. And the other things we know about Clockface is that they know Marinette is Ladybug, as they write in Lila's death note. And in order to tell Lila that, they also need to know that Lila is the Butterfly Miraculous holder. And of course, they need some kind of motivation as to why they are telling Lila in the first place. But honestly, I'm a bit unsure about it. Like, if they take Marinette's Miraculous, which they do, why does it matter if Lila knows that Marinette is Ladybug? Like, here you go, Marinette is Ladybug. Great. I also took a Miraculous, though, so the information's really pointless. Already sorted that one out for you, mate. Already defeated her, so <laughs> don't really get it, personally. Anyway, those are the facts of what we know so far about Clockface, and in my opinion, at the minute, with what we know, there are three suspects. Adrikins, Lila, and Time Master. And we're going to start with the last one. So, Time Master was mentioned in an article a while ago now that read... As part of its debut, Miraculous Corp teased several new characters set to appear in Miraculous films and series, including Rainbow Light, Tiger Force, Captain Justice, Time Master, Jungle Queen, and Lady Dragon. Of course, we already know Lady Dragon already. Tiger Force is definitely not them. They've been confirmed to have their own thing, and that character's going to have cancer. And we've also seen what we think is Rainbow Light or Lady Light. But with Zag, you know, things are always subject to change, so you might never see any of those. <laughs> Nope, not yet. So Time Master is mentioned here, and this is their only real mention anywhere outside of the London special. And there was also this from a Zag influencer that's been making the rounds on Twitter. The other villain here is Time Master. Now, personally, I don't trust what someone says just because it says Zag influencer in their bio. I don't particularly trust the Miraculous Ambassadors either. Both have been known to lie and leak information without permission. And I could also just put Zag Influencer in my Instagram bio and you'd have no way of knowing I was telling the truth or not. So I don't actually know if they really are a Zag Influencer, whatever one actually is in the first place, because I don't understand their function. And they're also unsure about a lot of things in the video too. I'm pretty sure this is Ladybug telling Adrian that his dad died. So honestly, I don't particularly trust this video as far as I could throw it in terms of <laughs> the confirmation of things. And as much as I don't like him, Thomas Astruck has also denied that this is Time Master. But let's just go with it. Let's just say this is Time Master because Thomas Astruck also frequently lies. I swear to God, this show has given me trust issues. <laughs> And honestly, I don't think it's too terrible of an idea if this person is Time Master. The other specials have been used to introduce us to a new characters who are supposedly getting their own spin-offs and that have 
yet to materialise, <laughs> like Jess and Aeon for New York and Faye in Shanghai, and now the spin-off comic for the Reverse. Or not. <laughs> so I would assume if this is Time Master, they're introducing them here and they will get their own spin-off. Or not, you know? It's just the way that it is. Nope, not yet. But other than that, I don't think we can theorise too much since we don't know who they are. In my opinion, if this really is Time Master, a brand new character, then like Jess, Aeon and Faye, they will be a brand new person, so I don't know what their motivation would be, but I would guess that they've seen Marinette as Ladybug through whatever their Burrow equivalent is, or they've been following Ladybug and seen her detransform. And I would also assume they're from London, because London special! From the trailer so far, other than the scenes in the torture rooms for Adrian and Kagami, there does seem to be a rather big absence of London from the special at the minute, so they either called it the London special because this is Time Master and they are from London, or because, like, two scenes take place in London and they were like, oh my god, it's a world special, we've got to name it after at least one city in the world, pick one quickly, it's gotta be London! <laughs> However, if this really is Time Master, while they may appear to be a villain for most of the special, as the special goes on, I definitely think they could be redeemed and become a hero by the end of it, a bit like Shady Book and Claw Noir did, especially if they are going to get their own, maybe, spin-off that never happens. Nope, not yet. Moving on, let's talk about Adrikins and whether or not he's Clockface. I think this is the most popular theory from what I've seen on Twitter, and honestly this is my favourite too, um, but sadly with the information we have right now, it doesn't make total sense at the minute. So from the trailers so far, it doesn't seem like Adrian's going to be in the special a great deal, other than Book Noir telling him Gaby Baby is dead. That really seems to be the majority of Adrian's involvement in the special. And while, you know, I, I'm, I understand they don't enjoy giving Adrian too much screen time, even that's a bit extreme for this writing team. Like, they usually give him a tad bit more than just a couple of scenes, especially for the length of a special. And we also know there's meant to be a twist in the special. And I do think it would be a really good twist if Clockface is Adrian and he's technically in the special all the way through, but we actually don't find out till the end because Marinette will probably find out, as she usually does. However, why would Adrian do this? Ever since the end of season 5, I've been saying it's not an if he'll find out about Gaby Baby, it's a when. But I've been pretty flexible about how he will find out or who he'll find out from. But I do think one likelihood is that Ladybug will just tell Cat Noir. We saw in confirmation she texts Cat Noir, but she never sends it. But it seems plausible here that she could tell Cat Noir that Gabriel was Monarch Daddy because... Why wouldn't she? She doesn't know he's Adrian, and she doesn't think she needs to protect Cat Noir from this information. And I think she could tell Paris that Hawk Daddy has been defeated in these scenes, and either before or after that, she also tells Cat Noir what happened. However, in the ending of Recreation, we all know Gaby Baby has been remembered as a martyr who actually helped to take down Monarch Daddy and died in the process. And Adrian doesn't mention in the ring scene what his dad did. He has no idea and sounds quite proud of his dad. So perhaps at first Ladybug tells Paris and Cat Noir that it was Gabriel Agreste as the culprit. However, Bunnix discovers it leads to Clockface arriving, who is Adrian, stealing the miraculous and making a wish. So Bunnix, like in Cat Blank, she needs to take Marinette to a time before she told Paris and Cat Noir what Gabriel had done and instead say that Gabriel had helped her rather than being the culprit to stop it from altering the future. However, before they can resolve it all, Adrian, angry at his dad for what he did, starts to pull away from his friends, including Marinette, and tries to resolve what his dad did. He somehow requires the powers to do it so he can make his own wish, travels back in time to a vulnerable moment to when Gabriel made his own wish, and intends to steal the miraculous for himself to try and rectify things. However, in the process, in those scenes, he sees Marinette detransform, and therefore knows she's Ladybug. However, why would he want to tell Lila that? I'm not really sure. He'd have to really, really, truly hate Marinette to do that to her. Not to mention also be really, really good friends with Lila as well. Like, you'd need to be pretty close to Lila in order to portray the girl you're apparently in love with for a girl he knows lies and tries her best to hurt people. I have thought before that when Adrian found out about Gaby Baby being Monarch Daddy, he would be very angry and upset, quite rightly so. But in this version of events, Ladybug doesn't hide it from him. So why would his anger be directed at her? Surely it would only be directed at his dad, not at Marinette or Ladybug. And how he'd find out Lila is the butterfly miraculous holder is another question that I don't have the answer to. 
Not to mention, Adrian gets his miraculous back after the wish, as we see he's cat noir in this scene, so why would he as Clockface need to steal the black cat miraculous? Unless, of course, it gets taken off him or he rescinds it again for reasons that I don't know. However, interestingly, we don't see the ring on Clockface here, so maybe it's just taken too early, we can't see it yet, but I don't know where it is. So while I definitely like the idea of Clockface being Adrian, I definitely do think it's a lot less likely, but that's just perhaps because we're missing some key facts here and we can't piece it all together just yet. So now let's move on to our final suspect, which is Lila, or rather Lila from the future, but I'm not talking like Lila, age 40 or something like that. I'm talking like the near future, probably no longer than a year into the future. And before anyone says, Clockface has the build of a boy, so does Sparrow in the New York special, and that's Jess. So I don't necessarily think that narrows it down, to be honest. I don't think it means Clockface has to be male. I do think it still could be anyone. So for Lila, I think the best bet would be for her to akumatize herself, as we've seen Gabriel do before, or she akumatizes somebody else. I know a popular idea here is Chris, and she sends Chris or whoever back in time, or herself back in time, to a moment when they're miraculous or vulnerable, which is during the wish. So we know the butterfly can akumatize someone with a time travel ability, like Alex in Timebreaker and Chris in Time Tagger, hence why Chris is becoming a popular idea as Clockface. So Lila has given herself or someone else the ability to travel back in time to this moment to take the miraculous and make their own wish. If it's Lila, then that's all Gucci. She gets whatever it is she wants, which I don't know what she wants, <laughs> but if she sends Chris or someone else in her place, then I'm not really sure she can guarantee they'll do what she wants, but right, Lila. However, once again, they see Marinette D transform, they know she's Ladybug, and they steal all the Miraculous and make the wish. If it's Lila, then she knows she has the Butterfly Miraculous, because obviously she does, <laughs> but she would need to tell Chris or whoever she sends instead her identity or at least where her base is so they can access it in the catacombs. However, again, why does Lila tell herself or someone else tell her that Marinette is Ladybug? Clockface has defeated her, they've stolen her miraculous, so why does it matter what Ladybug's identity is? Is this just like a failsafe in case Marinette manages to win and this will give Lila the upper hand if she knows Marinette's identity? And at this point, yes, we do have to bring up the clip from the end of Recreation. I look forward to seeing you again. Marinette Dupin Chang. There are multiple reasons I still stand by for Lila saying this, such as Lila did indeed see Marinette D transform in recreation and she's like, I can't wait to see you again and defeat you, but it also could just be because Lila has a lot of animosity towards Marinette and just can't wait to take her down back at school, or of course, clock faces Lila, or one of her Akuma victims was and they've told her, and while Lila didn't end up winning in the London special, she now knows Marinette is Ladybug and is ready to defeat her, but if that's the case, then I definitely think it's going to be very, very easy for Lila to win. And I can't really see a way of them writing around this. And it being a really powerful Akuma could also explain what happens at the end of Recreation with the lightning and things levitating. Clockface does have some really cool powers that do seem quite powerful, so perhaps this could once and for all explain what happens in her catacombs base. And just to note, Clockface is also holding something here, but I don't know what it is. And at this point, they don't seem to have any of the Miraculous rings on, so turning invisible can't be the rooster acting here. It would have to be a power they already have, presumably from an Akuma or some other kind of powerful magical jewellery, but I don't know. So there you go, besties. That's all my thoughts on who Clockface is. But honestly, I'm not 100% sure. My favourite pick at the minute would be Adrian. I think that would be so cool but I'm not 100% sold on it with all the information we have at the minute. But of course, besties, I'd love to know what you think. Do you think it's Time Master? Do you think it's Adrian? Do you think it's Lila? Do you think it's Chris? Do you think it's Miss Bustier? <laughs> Whoever. I'd love to know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.